Billy's Paintings, number two, Egypt Station. This is an excerpt from an interview with Billy from page 56 of Paul McCartney Paintings. Billy, my original inspiration was Egyptian symbols and shapes from looking at a reference book on Egypt. I was interested in the way they drew sunflowers and two appear on the left and on the right. It was a nice shape, so I took that, and then I love the way they symbolise trees. Interviewer. It's a special kind of tree. It is called a Lebensbaum in Germany, the tree of life. Billy. It's a cedar tree, I think. I like the way they reduce the tree to just some simple symbols. And as I say, I use this kind of idea later on in the Celtic pictures, where the trees are quickly drawn. This is the basic symbol that I base that on. So I put the tree and the sunflowers in, and then the sun is another symbol that I took, and then the ibex, the animal there with the long horns. This sitting dog was another Egyptian shape. So I seated them there, and why I called it Egypt Station because it looked like a station, like train lines at the bottom, and underneath that, the edge of the platform. In fact, that was taken from a piece of pottery. Interviewer. The platform? Billy. It looked like the platform of a train station. But this is just a bit of design on the rim of some pottery. That is what it is taken from. And then the landscape was the actual landscape of where I was. The sky and the clouds were the actual patterns, a very strange pattern of clouds, but they are very accurate, quite an accurate picture of how the clouds were that day, and so I just copied them. And then the man, originally done by James, my son, when he was very young, he would occasionally do little pencil drawings on canvases. He had done a little pencil drawing of this man, and I liked it so much that I filled it in. So he was actually James's, that guy, but I painted it in. Interviewer. It looks like a coat covered with balloons. Billy. Yes, it is an interesting coat, that. Like a jacket, with little striped trousers, pink hair. Let's start where he left off. Let's start by considering the man in Billy's painting. To me, he reminds me of a jester. Perhaps he is a reference to Billy's role as Vivian stands for in the Bonzos. Equally, this man could be a reference to Billy being in the Masonic group known as the Royal Order of the Jesters. Other jesters, or falls, that relate back to Billy are, of course, his song, Fall on the Hill, and the fall card in the tarot deck. Billy says that his Egyptian symbols and shapes were taken from a reference book on Egypt, and that he was interested in the way that they drew sunflowers. That is why two appear on the left and right hand side of the painting. The problem is that sunflowers aren't native to Egypt. Sunflowers are native to the Americas. They were introduced to Western Europe around 1550, but they were only introduced to Egypt in the last few decades, so they won't be found in the artwork of ancient Egypt, which is what he is referring to. The Aztecs were one of the first cultures to appreciate the sunflower. They associated the bright yellow flower with the sun god Huitzilopochtli, who was also associated with war and death. So what did Billy base his sunflowers on and for what reason? Possibly, Billy based his sunflowers on a stylized form of the plants found at the base of the Sumerian walker vase, which was found in the temple of Inanna, in modern-day Iraq. The vase dates back to about 3000 BC, and the full vase is about one metre high. Bear in mind that the Sumerian Inanna is synonymous with the Egyptian Isis. The stylized shape also reminded me of a fractal tree, as seen in the 1783 text Philosophica Botanica by Carl Linnaeus as seen here on the top right photo. Another idea that Billy might be referring to with his sunflowers can be found in the Greco-Roman mythology of the sun god Apollo. 
he had an admirer in the form of the sea nymph called Clytie. And we can see her as a bust on the left here, fringed with sunflower petals. She sat naked, looking longingly at Apollo for nine days, without food or water. At that point, feeling sorry for Clytie, Apollo transformed her into a sunflower, which turns its head to the sun because they are phototropic. Apollo is the Greco-Roman equivalent of the Egyptian god Horus, which, according to Billy, is himself. Lastly, are the sunflowers on either side of Billy's painting a reference to the twin pillars of Freemasonry? Or possibly the twin sunflowers relate to Billy being Paul's twin? Is there some significance to the number of rays that each sunflower has in the painting? The left one has 10 rays and the right one has 11. There are also 19 small branches on the tree in the painting, which reduces to the number 10, the number of completion. Adding all the rays of the sunflowers, the sun, and the small branches on the tree, it sums to 47, which reduces to 11. 11 is both the number of general magic and of the master apprentice, the number of spiritual knowledge, and also harmony, because it quietly contains the number two as well. The eye within the sun could relate to the eye of provenance, or the all-seeing eye, which is often shown as an eye within a sunburst. This idea is used throughout alchemical and Masonic imagery, and most notably on the back of a US dollar bill. In Billy's painting, the sun has nine rays, so between the sun and the rays of the right-hand sunflower below, there is an encoded 9-11, the date of Paul's death. When I first looked at this tree in Billy's painting, I thought it might be a stylized palm tree. This made sense, since there are many links to the palm tree in Egyptian mythology. The branches and twigs reminded me of the end of the Was Scepter, which is often seen being held by Egyptian gods. For the ancient Egyptians, the palm tree is a solar tree, symbolic of resurrection and victory over death and sin. It was the tree of the calendar, because they produce a new branch each month. It was sacred at Heliopolis, the city of the sun. This was the centre of the cult for the god Atum, who was later identified with Ra and then Horus. Toth kept records of rule under Ra, on palm shoots, and palm fronds are used in the procession in honour of Isis. In Greek mythology, Apollo and his twin Artemis were born under a palm tree and are also associated with the sun. However, as we saw before, Billy says that it is a cedar tree in his painting, and cedar trees have more connections to the Sumerians than the Egyptians. The cedar was also said to have been used for the construction of the Temple of Solomon, so it has Masonic links too. The cedar tree was the cosmic tree or tree of life for the Sumerians, seen here on the left, with a winged sun above it, much like the Egyptian sun disk god Aten. See below. The cedar was said to possess magical qualities and was sacred to the shepherd god, Demutzid, also known as Tamutz. Billy is, of course, a shepherd by name, but so too is Paul, if he is Osiris, who is also known as the Good Shepherd. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, a key scene is set in a cedar forest, in which the characters Gilgamesh and Enkidu perform dream rituals and fight a monster called Humbaba. Gilgamesh and Enkidu cut down many cedars to build a raft to sail home, with Enkidu also planning to fashion a gate for a temple to Enlil out of another cedar tree. Later in the story, Dumitzet is quoted as the love of Inanna's youth. You can see them on a section of tablet on the left. In another epic poem, Inanna's Descent into the Underworld, Dumitzet's wife, Inanna, 
escapes from the underworld but is pursued by demons who insist that someone takes her place. Eventually the demons take Dumadzet because Inanna feels that he hasn't properly mourned her. He then becomes the archetypal dying and rising god when he is rescued by Inanna's brother. In some versions of his story, Dumadzet was turned into an alulu bird with a broken wing. In other versions, he becomes a gazelle. So now let's look at the ibex in the painting. From page 324 of Memoirs, with reference to Egypt Station, Billy also says, The train station, or spaceport, connects heaven and earth, not only for the ancient gods to come and meet him, but for him to meet them where they are. It is his point of ascension. The ibex stands ready. The heads of ibex were often used as decoration on Egyptian funeral barges, like this bronze cast one seen on the far left from about 1000 BC. Whilst we could make references to rams or the goat of Mendes, I think that would miss the point. This ibex stands ready for Billy when he dies, just as ibex stand ready for any Egyptian god. Let's now look at the jackal. The jackal is the animal symbolising the Egyptian god Anubis. He was the god that welcomed the dead. He is also the god of the mummifying process. Here he is on the far left, holding an ankh, the symbol of life, and also the was scepter. In a funerary context, the was scepter was responsible for the well-being of the deceased and was thus sometimes included in the tomb equipment or in the decoration of the tomb or coffin. In the model of the funeral barge seen here, Anubis as the jackal guards the deceased body below him. Also note the ibex heads. In memoirs, Billy said that the train station in his painting is in fact a spaceport. In the temple of Seti, Ra is shown in a boat called a solar bark, sailing across the sky, seen here on the left. For the twelve daylight hours, Ra used the bark of millions of years. At night he used the Moseket boat, or night bark. Also note that the bark is surrounded by blue lotus flowers, the hallucinogenic flowers which were discussed in my Whisper Messages video. Ancient astronaut theorists claim that the solar barks were in fact depictions of Einstein Rosen bridges, better known as wormholes in space-time. It's true that they have the same shape as a bark. Could it be that the Egyptian gods had mastered space-time travel via wormholes? Some contactees also claim that there is a fourth-dimensional stargate at the Great Pyramid of Giza, so maybe the two phenomena are connected. Ancient astronaut theorists also claim that the pyramids at the Giza Plateau are part of a power network of pyramids which cross the whole of Earth. The capstones, known as benbens, are usually missing, but were originally topped with gold or a gold-silver alloy called electrum. Obelisks also had these gold caps, but few of them remain in existence, like this one on the left. If the pyramids are part of a power network, the obelisks could be receiver transmitters, capping them with gold, which is highly conductive of electricity, would make sense. Maybe that's why a pyramid that is transmitting waves of energy is included on the album artwork for Egypt Station. And you can see that in the insert. I think there's three of those, in fact, on the album cover. While Nikola Tesla was working on his system of wireless energy, he was regularly receiving feedback from an archaeological field trip in Egypt funded by J.P. Morgan. By the time that field trip ended, Tesla had developed his electric oscillator, Tesla coil, and his 187-foot Tesla tower at Wardenclyffe Shoreham, New York. 
there is a striking resemblance between the oft-seen combination of the Egyptian Ankh, Jed Pillar, and Was Scepter, seen here on the far left, with Tesla's electric oscillator. Could their underlying technologies be related? Many ancient civilizations believe that behind everything in existence there is an invisible matrix of energy, which is the source of all physical manifestation via patterns of sacred geometry. In ancient Egypt, every important structure was built on the larger power spots within the energy matrix of the Earth. The geometric shapes, now known as platonic solids, correspond to the elements of earth, water, air and fire, the secret fifth element being a life force called ether, symbolised by the dodecahedron. The world is said to fit inside this twelve-sided shape, with its primary nodal point aligning with the Giza plateau. It is like being inside a net of life force energy which forms a matrix. Those initiates who understood and could control and manipulate this matrix were called masters of the net. In ancient Egypt, lost souls of the dead were often depicted as fish caught in a net. With the ability to master the net, a soul could instead learn to navigate the net and develop abilities that the uninitiated would consider magical powers. The sacred geometrical shape, known as the Jed Pillar, also known as the Backbone of Osiris, was part of a ceremony called the Raising of the Jed to connect heaven and earth via the life force of the net. The chief among the masters of the net who conducted the Raising of the Jed were known as Jedi. This is why the Jedi in Star Wars have knowledge and command over the Force. The shape of the lightsaber hilt is also in the shape of a Jed pillar. The Egyptian gods were said to have come from the constellation of Orion, which appears low in the sky and slowly rises upwards. From the ground, Orion looks like he is walking across the sky. He is in fact a skywalker. Orion is constructed from some of the brightest stars or points of light in the sky. The name Luke is taken from the Latin for light. Therefore, in a sense, Orion is Luke Skywalker. Now let's consider the significance of the colours used in the Egypt Station painting. At the centre of the cross of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, we can see the three petals of the elemental trumps shown in the primary colours of yellow for air, blue for water and red for fire. These ideas were taken and transferred into Crowley's king scale of colours used in his Toth deck. The full card for air uses bright pale yellow. The hanged man card for water uses deep blue. The Aeon card for fire uses glowing orange scarlet. The Aeon card refers to the Aeon of Horus and features him. This means that both the Fall card and the Aeon card relate to Billy. The Hanged Man relates to Osiris, which is Paul. And here you can see the painting alongside those cards. For the Deluxe Explorer's Edition album art of Egypt Station, the cover image is morphed into a sunset scene, reflecting the sun setting of Billy's life and his public role as Paul McCartney. The word sunset is also a reference to the fight between the Egyptian gods Horus and Set, where Horus, the sun god, lost an eye. If the Sergeant Pepper artwork was a reference to Paul's funeral. Egypt Station is the preparation for Billy's. And that's the end of my presentation. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.